So let's talk about your research with, with anxiety in dogs. Mm -hmm. um, starting first with how, how do you recognize and how do you measure anxiety type behaviors in, in dogs? Right, so this is tricky because we can't ask dogs, hey dogs, how are <laughs> you feeling <laughs> right now? Uh, like you can with people. So a lot of the studies in humans are relying heavily on surveys and, and people's self-expression of how they're feeling in different situations. So for the dogs, we're, we're using changes in behavior, but we're pairing that with physiological changes as well that are known to tie into the stress response or anxiety response. So we look for things like changes in cortisol, but as many of you might know, cortisol is just a hormone that goes up with arousal and that can happen with both positive excitement and with, with stress. So we pair that then with cardiac activity. So we can look at things like heart rate, which also fluctuates with, with excitement, so it can go up when you're excited or stressed. But then more specifically, we can look at heart rate variability, which is actually the distance between your heartbeats. So if you're in a very positive, relaxed, neutral state, like hopefully most of you are right now listening to us, <laughs> you should have a lot of variability going on where your heartbeats, the milliseconds between your heartbeats will be fluctuating a lot. That means you're really behaviorally flexible to handle whatever challenges come your way. If you were in a more stressed, a more anxious state, you're worried about what's going on, maybe you're up here in front of the cameras <laughs> talking to everybody, your heart rate variability will go down, becomes very regulated, you're in that fight or flight mode. So we can look for changes in that way. So with the dogs, we look for things, changes in their behavior. So if your dog is barking less, maybe wandering around, panting less, um, showing less signs of stress, and then also with their physiology, physiology, we're seeing that maybe their heart rate variability is going up, their heart rate's going down, their salivary cortisol levels are going down. We pair all these things together to paint a complete holistic picture that both from a behavioral perspective and a physiological perspective, we're seeing dogs come into a, a more calm state. So we're equating that with a, a less anxious state. Okay, super. So you've actually been able to influence this mm -hmm. through specific probiotic organisms. Yes. Tell us more. And specific is the key because not <laughs> all probiotics are the same. Mm -hmm. And as Brittany will tell you, they don't all do the same thing and they're yep. not all targeting the same mechanisms. So we actually uh, did a lot of work ahead of even trying to feed probiotics where we were just studying the microbiome in anxious dogs and non-anxious dogs. What were the differences there? And then we looked at the difference for the dogs that were not anxious, that were super easygoing, that you could put them in any scenario and they're completely relaxed. What does their microbiome look like and how does that differ than the other dogs? And then we could target specific probiotics. Ooh.